A very good evening aspirants. I welcome you all to the Hindu daily news analysis brought to you by Shankar AS Academy. Aspirants, many of you are watching our videos without subscribing to our YouTube channel. So, please subscribe and hit the bell icon button to get regular updates about our future videos. Now, before getting into discussion, I have two important announcements to you. The first announcement is regarding the Indian Express news analysis. Aspirants, we have started a new initiative to boost your current affairs preparation. Every Sunday, we will post the video of Indian Express news analysis and in that particular video, we will cover the important topics from the Indian Express newspaper in a week. Aspirants, this will be very beneficial for your current affairs preparation. So, please give support to this new initiative. Now, coming to the second important announcement, the second announcement is regarding prelims test series. Shankar IAS Academy's batch 2 of UPSC prelims test series is about to begin on 15th October. The first test in this batch will be conducted on 22nd October. A total of 48 tests including mock test and CSAT will be provided in the test series. And the test is conducted both in online and offline mode. So, go and register to the test series immediately and boost your prelim score. With these happy announcements, let us get into the daily news analysis. Today, I am going to cover important news articles from the Hindu newspaper dated 13th of October 2023. Displayed here is a list of news articles that we will be discussing today. At the end of the video, we will also have prelims practice question discussions. So, try to watch the entire video. Now, let us get into our first news article discussion. Look at this news article. This article is based on the recently released Global Hunger Index. This article provides us some crucial data which can be used in our mains answer writing. Now, before understanding these points, first let us see the basics of Global Hunger Index. The Global Hunger Index, which is shortly known as GHI, is a comprehensive tool that is used to measure and track the prevalence of hunger at the global, regional and national levels. The Global Hunger Index is released annually by every October. It is being released by two non-governmental organizations, namely Concern Worldwide, which is an island-based NGO, and Wilt Hunger High Life, which is a Germany-based NGO. Okay. Now, what are the main purposes of Global Hunger Index? Firstly, the Global Hunger Index intends to raise awareness about hunger in the world by providing comparative data on hunger between countries and regions. Secondly, the Global Hunger Index calls for attention in those areas where hunger levels are highest and where the additional efforts is needed to eliminate hunger. Okay, This is all about the objectives and purposes of Global Hunger Index. Now, coming to the scoring and ranking mechanism, see the scores of Global Hunger Index are based on the values of four indicators such as undernourishment, child stunting, child wasting and child mortality. Now, we will see in brief about these indicators. Firstly, let us take undernourishment. See, undernourishment refers to the share of population with insufficient calorie intake. Then secondly, child stunting. Child stunting refers to the condition where the children aged under 5 have low height for their age. Basically, child stunting reflects chronic undernutrition. Then comes child wasting. Child wasting refers to the condition where the children aged under 5 have low weight for their height. Here, wasting reflects acute undernutrition. Okay. Now, finally, let us take child mortality. Child mortality refers to the share of children who die before their fifth birthday. Child mortality partly reflects the fatal mix of inadequate nutrition and unhealthy living environments. Okay. This is all about the four indicators under the Global Hunger Index. Now, look at this table here. Here, the weightage of each indicator is given. See, undernourishment and child mortality have 1 by 3rd weightage each. Then, the child stunting and child wasting have 1 by 6th weightage each. Okay. Note that the data to arrive at the score will be utilized from various organizations like United Nations Food and Agriculture Organization, UNICEF, World Health Organization and so on. See, based on the values of these four indicators, a global hunger index score is calculated. The score is represented on a 100 point scale which reflects the severity of hunger. Okay. Here, 0 is the best possible score which means that there is no hunger. Whereas, 100 is the worst score which means that there is severe hunger. Note that the score is classified into 5 parts based on the severity. 
that is from low to extremely alarming see the countries are placed in certain category based on the scores this is the basics about global hunger index now moving on to see about the data from this year's index see in the 2023 global hunger index india ranks 111 out of a total 125 countries India obtained a score of 28.7 in the 100 point scale. So India falls under the serious hunger category. See India has made progress in reducing hunger. The scores were improved from 38.4 in 2000 to 28.7 in 2023. But India still falls under the serious category. So India has to take adequate steps to reduce prevalent hunger. And note that the Indian government rejected the findings of 2023 Global Hunger Index. India said that the index was flawed and it does not reflect India's true position. Okay. Also know that Afghanistan, Haiti, and 12 sub-Saharan countries performed worse than India on the Global Hunger Index. Okay. This is all about the important data from the news article. And that's all regarding this discussion. In this discussion, is all about the basics about Global Hunger Index, and we saw some points about India's position in the recently released global hunger index so you can use these points while writing your main answer which will enrich your answer okay now with these points in mind let us move on to the next news article discussion look at this article from the science page yesterday that is 12th of october was observed as the world arthritis day see the arthritis day is being observed every year to spread awareness about the existence and impact of rheumatic and musculoskeletal diseases Now in this discussion let us understand some points about arthritis disease. First of all know that arthritis generally means joint pain or joint inflammation. See arthritis is a common term that is used to describe more than 100 different types of joint related conditions that causes inflammation, pain and stiffness in the joints. Know that there are two most common types of joint related conditions such as osteoarthritis and rheumatoid arthritis if we take osteoarthritis it is a condition where the cartilage in the joints of our bones gets teared away now what is this cartilage now look at this image here this is the cartilage cartilage is a strong and flexible connective tissue that protects our joints and bones it acts as a shock absorber throughout our body it reduces frictions between the bones and it prevents the bones from rubbing together when we stand or walks okay now look at this another image here see this is how healthy joint looks like but in the case of osteoarthritis the cartilage gets teared away and this causes inflammation and pain in the joints now coming to the second type that is the rheumatoid arthritis see in this type the immune system of our body attacks the joints mistakenly and this causes huge pain in the joints and inflammation okay so these are the two common types of arthritis prevalent in the world now moving on to say about the causes of arthritis see the specific cause of arthritis can vary depending on the type but now we will see the common causes firstly some types of arthritis are caused due to genetic predisposition for example if our parents or grandparents has arthritis then we are also at the risk Secondly aging also causes arthritis see if people getting aged there is a wear and tear on the joints over the time this causes the joint inflammation and this is only referred to as osteoarthritis okay so aging also could be a reason for arthritis thirdly autoimmune conditions also results in arthritis see due to autoimmune conditions sometimes our body's immune system mistakenly affect the joints this causes inflammation in the joints okay and this condition is only referred to as rheumatoid arthritis and fourthly certain types of arthritis can also be caused by bacterial or viral infections and finally joint injuries like fractures or ligament tears can also lead to arthritis okay so these are all some of the causes of arthritis now talking about the symptoms of arthritis see the persons with arthritis experiences sharp pain in joints there is also inflammation and swelling around the affected joints see the arthritis often results in stiffness of bone joints so the people cannot able to stand or walk for a long time 
apart from this the people with arthritis condition experiences difficulty in moving the affected joint in addition to this the people also get a low grade fever when they are affected with autoimmune types of arthritis okay this is all about the symptoms now coming to the prevention as we saw earlier some types of arthritis are caused due to genetic or aging factors in these cases the arthritis mostly cannot be reversed so except these types there are several general strategies to reduce the risk of arthritis as we all know excess weight can put additional stress on joints especially in the lower body so maintaining a healthy weight could reduce the risk of arthritis apart from this eating a balanced diet that is rich in fruits vegetables and omega 3 fatty acids may help to reduce inflammation in the joints okay and know that smoking has been linked to an increased risk of developing rheumatoid arthritis so quitting smoking can also help to avoid the risk of arthritis okay this is all about the prevention measures now finally we will see the treatment for arthritis firstly taking medications like non steroidal anti inflammatory drugs and disease modifying anti rheumatic drugs may help to reduce inflammation in the joints and reduces joint pain secondly some of the physical therapy like exercises can also help to improve joint function and reduces pain thirdly lifestyle changes like weight management and taking adequate rest can help to manage symptoms of arthritis fourthly using steroid injections directly into the joint can provide some pain relief and finally a joint replacement surgery can be carried out in severe arthritis cases to improve the joint function okay this is all about the treatment for arthritis and that's all regarding this discussion in this discussion is all about the basic facts about arthritis then we saw about the two most common types of arthritis then we saw some points about the causes and symptoms of arthritis and finally we saw some points about the prevention and treatment of arthritis now with these points in mind let us move on to the next news article discussion look at this editorial article this article talks about the benefits of caste based census we all know that recently the bihar state government has released caste census this article here is written in that context only this editorial article points out various impacts of caste based census on improving the social justice in our country this is the crux of this editorial now in this discussion we shall look at the significance of caste based census in advancing social justice as usual we will approach this topic with mains answer writing come interactive approach now before getting into discussion let us look into the syllabus in prelims this topic will come under economic and social development demographics social sector initiatives and in mains it comes under gs paper 1 under the topics of salient features of indian society diversity of india and population and associated issues okay this is all about the syllabus now first we look at the question here the question is examine the significance of caste based census in advancing social justice and inclusive development 10 marks 150 words now first let us understand the question here the keyword is examine see if the question contains the directive examine we have to explain the topic with suitable evidences or examples here the question is about caste based census so in the introduction part you have to write what is caste based census and its relation to social justice then the body of the answer should contain the significance of caste based census with respect to social justice and inclusive development and finally in the conclusion part you can summarize the importance of caste based census okay this is how you have to approach this question now let us start with introduction see here the question is about caste census so in the introduction part we can write what is caste based census and its relation to social justice in the introduction can be like a caste based census in india gives us crucial data on the distribution and socio economic conditions of diverse castes and communities this data is valuable for creating policies based on social justice and it also helps in identification of marginalized groups the policies and programs that are based on caste based data have the potential to uplift marginalized communities and it also promote social justice and inclusive development okay so this can be a good intro for your answer see in the intro part we have related a caste census with social justice and this is how you have to relate 
one topic with the other now coming to the body part of our answer see here we have to provide the significance of caste based data in promoting social justice and inclusive development we can also provide examples of schemes or policies wherever necessary okay now we shall see the significance of caste based data one by one firstly the caste based data helps to create targeted welfare programs see caste based data can help the government to design welfare programs that specifically addresses the needs of marginalized communities for example various scholarships skill development initiatives and employment schemes can be formulated to uplift the most disadvantaged communities okay this is the first significance secondly the caste based data helps the government to streamline education see caste based data can help the government to identify communities with low literacy rates and low educational attainment this information can guide the government to improve the access to education in marginalized communities for example the government is currently providing post metric scholarship for scheduled caste students for pursuing higher education these programs can be made more efficient with the help of relevant caste based data okay this is the second significance thirdly the caste based data will help to streamline reservation policies see the caste based data can provide insights into the effectiveness of reservation policies the data will help policy makers to assess whether reservation policies are reaching the intended beneficiaries apart from this the caste based data will also help to make necessary adjustments in reservation policies from time to time okay fourthly the caste based data helps for better resource allocation the caste census will provide precise data on the distribution of different caste groups across the country so the caste based data will guide the equitable allocation of resources such as education healthcare and economic opportunities in this way the caste census can reduce disparities among caste groups and it promotes inclusive development fifthly caste based data promotes social empowerment by recognizing the socio economic disparities between castes the government can design programs that empower marginalized communities and this includes financial assistance vocational training and access to market etc okay for example the government is currently implementing janani suraksha yojana to help pregnant women from marginalized communities the government can make use of caste based census to identify the left out beneficiaries and to make the scheme more successful okay sixthly the caste based data assists to carry out land reforms see caste based data can also play an important role in land reform policies it ensures that land is equitably distributed among different castes without any biases for example earlier caste based data is used for land distribution policies in states like kerala and this ensured that landless and marginalized communities have access to land for agricultural and residential purposes so this way the caste based data assists to carry out land reforms lastly the caste based data will help to enhance political representation of all communities see understanding caste dynamics can help us to understand the political representation the data from caste census will help to allocate reserved seats for scheduled castes and scheduled tribes in both local and national level elections in this way the caste census will help to increase the representation of all communities in political offices okay so these are all some of the important significance of caste data in relation to social justice and inclusive development this is all about the body part of the answer now coming to the conclusion part see we can conclude this answer by giving a short summary of our entire answer that is we can provide an overall view of how caste census impacts social justice the conclusion can be like caste based data significantly influences the design and implementation of government policies also it helps to make sure that policies are aimed at advancing social justice and inclusive development okay overall caste based data helps in identifying historically marginalized communities and directing the resources where they are most needed the caste based data serves as a crucial tool in the nation's journey towards a more equitable and inclusive society where opportunities are accessible to all okay in this way we can give a comprehensive conclusion for these types of questions and that's all regarding this discussion in this discussion is about the significance of caste based data in attaining social justice and inclusive development 
see this topic is very much important for your mains so revise all the points that we discussed with these points in mind let us move on to the next news article discussion look at this news article recently the national green tribunal has issued notices to the chief secretaries of all states and the secretary of jal shakti ministry see earlier in 2021 the national green tribunal made an order to clean polluted river stretches of india but the order has not been implemented till now so the national green tribunal has issued notices by pointing out the earlier order okay this is all about the news now in this discussion we will understand some facts about national green tribunal from pollum's perspective now let us start with the basics of national green tribunal the national green tribunal which is in short known as ngt was established in 2010 under the national green tribunal act 2010 so it is a statutory body basically the national green tribunal is a specialized body that specifically deals with environmental disputes the ngt was created to reduce the burden of cases in the higher judiciary see before the creation of ngt the environmental disputes were handled by the supreme court and the high courts this burdened the courts with huge cases so to reduce such burden the national green tribunal was created okay see the jurisdiction of ngt extends to environmental protection forest conservation and conservation of natural resources know that ngt is not bounded to act based on the procedure laid down under code of civil procedure 1998 whereas the ngt is guided by the principles of natural justice note that the principal bench of national green tribunal is situated in new delhi while the other four benches are located in bhopal pune kolkata and chennai okay now talking about the composition of national green tribunal see the national green tribunal consists of a chairperson and several other judicial and expert members the chairperson is appointed by the central government in consultation with the chief justice of india whereas the judicial members and expert members are appointed by the central government based on the recommendations of a selection committee note that the selection committee would be formed by the central government from time to time okay and note that there should be at least 10 judicial members and expert members each in the tribunal but the members should not exceed 20 also note that the chairperson and the members shall hold office for a term of 5 years moreover they are not eligible for reappointment and this is to ensure independence of the national green tribunal okay this is all about the structure of national green tribunal now let us move on to say about important functions of the national green tribunal firstly the ngt has jurisdiction over all civil cases that involves a substantial question relating to environment this means that if any cases demand the enforcement of any legal right relating to environment like the right to clean air then right to clean water etc it will be dealt by the national green tribunal secondly the national green tribunal handles the cases that are related to protection and conservation of environment forests and so on see the ngt is mandated to dispose those cases within 6 months and it ensures effective and expeditious disposal of cases okay thirdly the ngt can order the concerned parties to provide relief and compensations to the victims of environmental issues it can also make an order to provide relief for damages to property due to pollution okay fourthly the ngt handles various environmental disputes that involves multidisciplinary issues finally the ngt deals with civil cases under the seven laws related to environment see the seven laws are displayed here you can go through it see any violation of these laws or any decision taken by the government under these laws they can be challenged before the national green tribunal okay this is all about the important functions of the national green tribunal now finally let us see some points regarding the order of national green tribunal see the order of the ngt is equal to the order of civil court note that the ngt act 2010 provides for punishment and penalty for non compliance of the ngt's order the punishment can be imprisonment for a term which may extend to 3 years apart from this a fine can also be imposed on the offenders which may extend up to 10 crore rupees sometimes both imprisonment and fine can also be imposed okay 
and know that an appeal against the order of national green tribunal goes to the supreme court the appeal should be filed within 90 days of the ngt's order okay and that's all regarding this discussion in this discussion is all about the formation of national green tribunal then is all about the composition of national green tribunal then we saw about important functions of the national green tribunal and finally we saw some points about the punishments for the violation of national green tribunal's order okay now with these points in mind let us move on to the next news article discussion look at this news article yesterday the tamil nadu chief minister has launched the project neelgiri thar it is a conservation program of the tamil nadu government that aims to protect and conserve neelgiri thar this program is going to be implemented for a period of 5 years The project seeks to improve our knowledge about Nilgiri Thar and their environment. Apart from this, the project also aims to reintroduce Nilgiri Thar to their original habitats and also aims to address immediate threats to the survival of Nilgiri Thars. Under this project, the Tamil Nadu government will raise awareness about the Nilgiri Thar and it will also promote ecotourism in specific locations. Okay, this is all about the news. Now in this context. Let us learn some points about Nilgiri Thar from Purlum's perspective. See, Nilgiri Thar is a species of mountain goat. They are found in the Western Ghats of southern India. Note that the Nilgiri Thar is endemic to Western Ghats. It is known for its distinctive curved horns. It is primarily found in hilly and rocky terrains of Western Ghats. And know that Nilgiri Thar is the state animal of Tamil Nadu. Now coming to the habitat. According to World Wildlife Fund, Nilgiri Thar's population has been estimated at 3,122 individuals in the wild, and it is found in the open mountain grassland habitats. They are found mostly at the elevations from 1,200 to 2,600 meter in Western Ghats. Okay. Now coming to the distribution of Nilgiri Thar, see previously Nilgiri Thar was found along the entire stretch of Western Ghats, but now it is found only in small fragmented pockets of western ghats they are distributed from nilgiris in the north to the kanyakumari hills in the south along the western ghats know that the aravikulam national park in anaimala hills of kerala is the home to largest population of nilgiri thar okay now moving on to say about the threats faced by nilgiri thar see nilgiri thar faces multiple threats from both natural and man made factors Habitat loss due to deforestation is the main reason for destruction of Nilgiri Thar's habitat. Apart from this, several other factors like competition with domestic livestock, hydroelectric projects in the Nilgiri Thar habitat and monoculture plantations are also threatening the survival of Nilgiri Thar. In addition to this, the Nilgiri Thar is also hunted for its meat and skin. And some of the other threats to the Nilgiri Thar include invasion of exotic species in the habitat. forest fires and over exploitation of forest resources okay this is all about the threats faced by nilgiri thar now finally let us see the conservation status of nilgiri thar the nilgiri thar is listed as endangered in the iucn red list of threatened species it is protected under schedule 1 of the wildlife protection act 1972 okay and that's all regarding this discussion this discussion is about various aspects of nilgiri thar Now with these points in mind let us move on to the next news article discussion look at this news article yesterday the director general of the national security guard that is the nsg said that india should develop a crisis management response framework at the national level to deal with extreme terrorist scenarios he said this point by highlighting the recent terror attack in israel the director general also noted that the government should invest in the skill upgradation of nsg personnel to deal with terrorist attacks okay this is all about the news now in this context let us learn some points about the national security guard from prelims perspective first of all know that the national security guard that is the nsg is a counter terrorism and special operations force it was formed in 1986 under the national security guard act 1986 the nsg was created aftermath of the operation blue star See Operation Blue Star is an Indian military action that was carried out in 1984 to remove militants from the Amritsar Golden Temple. Later this incident resulted in the Akshardham Temple attack and the assassination of former Prime Minister Indira Gandhi. 
this created a widespread security issue all over the country so at that time some experts pointed out that the indian army was burdened with huge tasks and they were also not well trained to handle special operations as a result of these observations the central government has planned to establish a separate force to handle special operations and this led to the creation of national security guard okay so the national security guard is now tasked to carry out counter terrorism and special operations in the country okay see the nsg personnel are often referred to as black cat commandos because of their black outfit okay and note that the nsg operates under the ministry of home affairs the director general of the nsg acts as a head of the nsg force note that the director general is selected and appointed by the minister of home affairs okay now talking about the groups under the nsg see the nsg mainly has two groups namely special action group and special rangers group the special action group primarily consists of personnel from the indian army and it is the main offensive or the strike wing of national security guard then the special rangers group mainly composed of personnel from the central armed police forces and state police organizations they provide support to the special action group apart from this they are also involved in providing security during vip visits and they also handle bomb threats and training okay now coming to the functions of the nsg firstly the nsg conducts counter terrorist tasks all over the country it also carry out counter hijacking tasks on land sea and air then nsc conducts rescue operations during terror attacks also they provide support to the central paramilitary forces to counter insurgency and finally the nsg also involves in various activities like bomb disposal post blast investigation and hostage rescue missions okay this all about the important functions performed by the national security guards and that's all regarding this discussion in this discussion we saw about the history of the formation of nsg then we saw about the two main groups of nsg and finally we saw some points about the functions of the nsg now with these points in mind let us move on to the next part of the video that is to discuss preliminary practice questions as friends today we are having three questions now look at the first question this question is regarding national green tribunal here three statements are given we have to find how many of the statements are correct look at the first statement it is a constitutional body established under article 21 of the indian constitution see this statement is incorrect the ngt was formed in 2010 based on the ngt act 2010 so it is a statutory body and not constitutional body so first statement is incorrect now coming to the second statement it deals with cases related to any violations under the forest rights act 2006 See this statement is incorrect. The NGT does not deal with any cases related to Forest Rights Act 2006. So second statement is incorrect. Now coming to the third statement, the NGT is not bound by procedure under the Code of Civil Procedure 1948. See this statement is correct. The NGT is not bound to act based on the procedure established under Code of Civil Procedure 1948. Whereas the NGT is guided by the principles of natural justice. So third statement is correct. Here only one statement is correct, so the correct answer for the question is option A, only one. Moving on, let's take up the second question. This question is regarding Neil Greetar. Here also three statements are given. We have to find how many of the statements are correct. Look at the first statement. The Neil Greetar is found in both eastern and western parts of India. See, this statement is incorrect. As we saw in the discussion, the Neil Greetar is endemic to western parts of India. So, first statement is incorrect. Now, coming to the second statement. they are categorized as vulnerable under the iucn red list see this statement is incorrect the nilgiri tar are listed as endangered in the iucn red list and not vulnerable so second statement is also incorrect now coming to the third statement it is the state animal of kerala see this statement is also incorrect because nilgiri tar is the state animal of tamil nadu and not kerala okay so third statement is incorrect here all the three statements are incorrect so the correct answer for the question is option d none Moving on, let's take up the final question. This question is regarding National Security Guard, that is NSG. Here four options are given. We have to find which one of the option is true. Look at the first option. NSG was formed in response to the 2008 Mumbai attacks. See, this option is incorrect. The NSG was 
formed in 1984 aftermath of operation blue star and not in response to 2008 mumbai attacks so first option is incorrect now coming to the second option the nsg primarily consists of personnel from paramilitary forces see this option is also incorrect because the nsg is composed of personnel from various branches of indian military and police and not primarily from paramilitary forces so second option is also incorrect now coming to the third option nsg is governed and controlled by the ministry of home affairs see this option is correct as we saw in the discussion the nsg is controlled by the ministry of home affairs so the correct answer is option c but we need to verify whether option d is wrong or not special action group and special protection group are the two main groups within the nsg see this option is incorrect the two groups within the nsg are the special action group and the special ranger group and know that the special protection group is a separate security force responsible for the protection of current and former prime ministers of india and their immediate family members so once again the correct answer is option c nsg is governed and controlled by the ministry of home affairs with this we have come to the end of the video if you found our video to be useful please like comment and share it with your friends and don't forget to subscribe shankar ai academy youtube channel thank you for listening